got you covered. This is News for Tucson. Breaking down Arizona football, the Wildcats with a 56-38 homecoming loss to the Oregon State Beavers. I'm David Kelly, joined as always by Glenn Howe. U of A football class of 1985 and Glenn, uh, oh man, they're, they're, we could go on about 20 minutes after this game, but uh, I'm going to start with the fact that I don't think when I left here Saturday morning or early Sunday morning, I, the, the phrase that kept coming through my mind was crisis situation. Are we at that point? I don't think we're at that point yet. And then midday Sunday, Florida State fired Willie Taggart in year two at 9 and 12 overall. I don't think that will happen at U of A. I don't think Kevin Sumlin is on the hot seat just yet. One, because I don't think they have the money to fire him. Two, because I think the Wildcats have a quarterback to move forward to. And a quarterback is half the battle. If you've got a guy that can, that can win you ball games moving forward, I think that's one of the reasons why Kevin Sumlin is safe. But we're very close to a crisis situation with this football program. I get to one game a year maybe because of the way these games are scheduled, and that was just a bad, bad day on the field. It was bad with only with less than 37,000 people in the, in the stands. Yeah. There's a ton of apathy. There were more people on University yeah. Avenue when well, I was driving out than there were that were inside the it. stadium. I got it, dude. It was, okay, it no, was very no. bad. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> But listen, this is the thing is, I think we're in a panic situation because I just don't see any leadership. I said, we, we got to have some leadership on this team of try to turn this whole thing around. Where are those guys that are going to be vocal? Who are going to be there? You're going to say, hey, man, when we go out in the field, we need to turn this around. I, don't, I, I just didn't see it. I was on the sideline. I didn't really see it. I like to see somebody come a step up and say, by their performance on the field, they don't may have to be vocal. They just got to turn it out. JJ is the only one I see out there is really, really playing really well. And he's playing with heart. And I see, you know, I see Grant get out there and everything, but I see some other guys that I'm just like, come on, let's go. Let's, let's get this thing going. Yeah, and I don't know that that's maybe the one issue with JJ is he's such a quiet kid. I don't, yeah. but we don't know what's going on inside we don't, that locker room. I don't I'm know that he's not the yeah, guy that yeah. he, but he, but you would wish that if he, if he has that kind of yeah. voice, that he's the guy and they're leading the charge. Because like I said last week, yeah. he's the only guy out there right now that's giving you a consistent performance week in and week out with his play. Two weeks ago, I said yeah. I thought this team should stay with Khalil Tate. Uh, yeah. I've changed my tune on that at four and five. You got to win two games to still get to a bowl game. Yeah. I think it's now time to turn the page it's to, to Grant Gannell. And, and I just and, and I want to and Glenn, let's there, there's a lot of stuff that, that, that Khalil is doing. I thought early in the game mm -hmm. he made some nice reads into the middle of the field uh, to, to make some throws. But then you get down to the red zone and he yeah. can't make the throws in the red zone uh, when you have receivers open. I want to show two particular plays that I think shows you the main difference between Grant Gannell yeah. and Khalil Tate. First drive, second half, mm -hmm. third down. You've got R Hamilcar Rashid, who owned the day with yeah. three sacks, coming off the edge here, and Khalil doesn't see this. He's got to – I talked way back again with Anu Solomon. Pre-snap reads. You've yeah. got to understand that if Hamilcar Rashid is coming off the edge on a blitz, you've yeah. got to throw hot. Yeah. He does not throw hot here to J.J. Taylor – Flip it to this next play for a third down and eight backed up against your end zone. Fourth quarter, Grant Cannell off the snap. Same situation. Yeah. Here comes Rashid, and he dumps it down to J.J. Taylor, allowing your best player to make a play right. in space. Yeah, and that's what we have to we have to understand where you are, assignment and alignment. Let's see where the alignment is and make the play. That I don't think Khalil's doing that right now. I think Grant is doing a better job, and that's why I think we need to turn the page and go. Do you think if they stay with this two-quarterback mindset that maybe you start Grant and then bring in Khalil as the changeup? If, if I was making the three, two, three million dollars a year, I'd go with Grant until he can't go no more. <laughs> okay, that's what I would do. I would turn the page and let him have it. I would like to see him have about four or five series in a row and see if he can get rolling and get going. That's what I'd like to see. Well, and it's nice, uh, Glenn, that we've got 
some local kids that are playing on this offense at the yeah. wide receiver position, but you see something there where these kids need to be maybe a little bit tougher than they, what they're, they, what they're they, playing right now. They have to get open. They, we have to get these – our receivers have to get open to help our quarterbacks. They got to make the catches. They got to be able to be in space, and they got to get just get open. That's what I have to see. I don't see us – we have to be more physical at all positions. The, the defensive line, we we were just getting pushed back. It was ridiculous how bad they were pushing us back. And then we have to, we just got to be physical all the way around. And I just, I just, it just, it's disturbing to see that or what we're, what I was seeing on that game on uh, Saturday. Well, you mentioned the defensive line, and I'll show this play here that I tweeted about on Sunday, where uh, the three guys here on the defensive line, including Trevin Mason, they just get pushed back past the first down line here. Yeah. And yeah, uh, Mason got a hands to the face there. They, mm. they did not get called. And that was a lot of the blowback that I was getting on that tweet. But yeah. if you're depending on the Pac-12 officials yeah. to turn your yeah. defense around, yeah. you're going to be waiting yeah. a long time. Yeah, that's a long that's, time. That's not it. You just got to be physical, be more f physical at the point of attack. And uh, we, we, we have to do some soul searching. We really do have to do some soul searching. Uh, what are we going to be? Are we going to be a team that just lays down the, the last four games, uh, three games that we're playing? And then we, got, and we, can't go up to, we can't go to Oregon and just get blown out. We got to be able to fight and be in that game. We got to be and then go to Utah coming home. There might be 20,000 at our, our state. It doesn't matter how many people are there. We have to be a better physical and we got to we got to cut down the, on the mistakes of uh, the penalties. There's a lot of things that we got to do and it's got to be cleaned up. What do you think has happened to Scotty Young? He was such a playmaker um, the last couple of years for this team, but he just seems lost out there in coverage. Uh, at times, he seems lost out there, particularly at times in the run game. I want to show this one particular play, which I didn't think was a very good play, uh, yeah. but you see it a little bit differently, Different. where um, he's going to basically, you've got this, this is a reverse play here by Oregon State, and he's the only one out here at this point, and mm -hmm. I thought he takes on the blocker here versus yeah. taking on the blocker, try to, if you're going to engage, engage with an opportunity to make a tackle rather than yeah. try to blow the guy up. And now you've got a play that goes down the field for 20 yards. I thought well, he should have approached that play a lot. Better I see it a little different. I see it a little different. I think he had outside contain. He is forcing the ball back inside. He should have had help from Pandy on the inside coming across. He's shuffling across, moving to the flow. He should have had help there, and he did. I think he did a proper did the proper technique of just making sure that he was. Uh, outside contain, nobody gets outside and force it back in. So it's Anthony Pandy who makes the mistake of going inside when he should have stayed. Yeah, the he was reading with the, he was going with the flow, got inside, and then they got a blocker on him. He's got to get through that blocker and go go to the outside and make he should have been made to play. All right, well, it is a bye week now for the University of Arizona ahead of a road game against Oregon and then a home game against Utah before. Heading up to Arizona State, uh, the bowl picture is uh, suddenly a lot more cloudy than it was uh, now with the, the losing streak for the Wildcats uh, hitting at four in a row. All right, we'll be back and uh, we'll take a week off and yep. we'll come back and we'll preview that Oregon game for you a week from Saturday.